sash training. A little extra training to help you get the black sash. The blue form, one of the two weapons required for getting your black sash. Kind of like with the other units, we'll probably rotate this out to something else next week. So we'll see what that is. And okay, uh, we'll do the whole thing and we'll pick a part to look at. So that way, um, if, you're, if you're a beginner watching this, um, same thing, try to see what you can get through with the whole thing, if, even if you're just figuring out which way it turns when, right? Um, and then we'll, you'll be able to get some clarity on some little part that we decide to work on. I believe we did the helicopter last time. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So we may do a different move this time. Walk through pace. This form can go faster, and it's fun to do, but we'll walk through for now. And begin. So it's a game of let's see if I can keep my shoe on without any stuff. But we're facing. And make sure you're not running in between me and the camera. Yep, there we go. section. So let's go, what is the, so we can either pick a very big challenge for everyone or something more bite-sized that's easy to, to get today. Let's go, um, I think what we could do is there's these set of four moves that repeat and it's right after the helicopter. Um, we'll do that. So sure. four moves, they're not the physically most challenging moves, but we'll get them. So we start at the end of the helicopter in the same foot placement as we were in the other part of the form. Left foot forward, basically double dragons. Left hand by the waist, right hand like it had come across and struck. So first is what you call up and over, or you'll hear, there's no really good official names for this form, so you'll hear variations on it. Um, high and low, you might hear it. Um, breaking it down, you're going to come up with the flute and your knee, like you're trying to stop something from coming down and hitting you in the head, you'll leave the ground only really enough to come up with force. Your support foot will turn. You're going to come down, keep the left hand where it is, swing the right over to strike low. And we'll go through all four, just because why not? Unwind in row. Here's the next move. You're going to come back, letting the flute unwind, I think, in the arms is how I think of it. And then you go into a row from four. There's the shove, pressuring to push off the strike. And then there's the turn and the strike, where you come to the shoulder, reset your left foot back, shift your weight, turn. And it's kind of where you started after the helicopter. So then we do it the other direction, which is convenient to see it on both sides there at home. So you're going to come up, over, strike low. Watch, I don't want to like get my head low. I want to sink in my body. And then unwind and row. Up. So that set of eight moves happens in that order. That's not just some drill to practice it both ways. That's kind of in the middle. You do these four one way, do them the other way, and then some other stuff happens. So, all right. Let's do that uh, a couple more times, just sort of instructionally, and then we'll practice it after that. So, come up like you're blocking, turn, come down, and strike. Unwind and row. Shove, pushing off. Turn and strike. And then repeat it. Come up, up down. Unwind, row. Shove. 
and it's coming over to the left. And I think of it as being in this plane right here, this plane where you can see me waving around. The next circles are in the other plane, so they go this way, this way, strike, shove, turn, and strike, up and over. some common mistakes that get made, but let's practice it a little bit and then we'll talk about that next. So just practice and begin. Okay, two more times. Any other questions, or are there any questions in here about those moves? Let me turn the strike. Does the hand stays at the hips, tip, or kind of near the hip? Yes, good, yeah. Just like where it starts, yes. And I think of that as sort of leverage pulling in to help the other side without. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And watch out, um, not watch out, um, to help get that move right, look for feeling the right arm and the turn connect to the hips, connect to the foot. So from here, if I broke it down like, like we were breaking down the form, which I don't usually, I would say sink in, step out, or step in, step out, shift to your left, turn to your left, turn the right, moves in. And that's when the flute would be coming in. So that's all just ways to feel it connect through the body, through the hip, through the waist, to the strike. And then have it be, you know, just less in the arms and just to really feel that connect. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah, very good. I guess that's trying to talk about why it's not there. Yeah. Okay, any others? Okay, so um, things that can go wrong on these moves. Common mistakes, it's a segment called things that can go wrong. First one, um, up and over. I'm not trying to hop forward to come down. It's basically, think of if you were just coming up with your weight to help block a strike. If you were coming against the strike and it happened to give you enough weight to or enough clearance to turn your foot to come down the other way. That's the first one. Second one is this feels weird, especially if I don't let go of part of my hand. So if I'm gripping it really tightly in my left and I try to come over, it feels all kinds of bad in my shoulder and wrist and stuff like that. So keep control of it, but also don't strain your wrist. Unwind and row. What mainly goes wrong is trying to move both of the hands together, which feels disconnected. Same kind of thing, like like this one is like the lock of the oar, right? So the oar is coming up, and the left hand moves less, and then it's coming back, and the left hand moves less, and it comes forward to strike. This is a bunch of common mistakes at once. For the shove, the common mistake is to hop or to poke, right? So even if the flute starts down, I'm going to bring it up and then shove out like I'm trying to push someone back. And then for the turn of the strike, common mistakes are just ending up on a tightrope or just turning and then feeling like a step needs to happen so then the other foot comes forward. So it's really almost just doing too much. Okay, does all that make sense? Okay. All right. Uh, with that in mind, let's practice that section a little more, a couple more times. Yeah. Well, let's take it back and move and forward. And move. So we'll We'll pad it out with an extra move on either side just to give it context in the form. So that brings us to, we have the shove, and here we're going to go helicopter through all those moves and then one more move. So helicopter. Up and over. Unwind and row. Shove. Start the strike. <coughs> Up and over. Unwind. Step forward, circle it around, and then have the left. It's kind of like breaking.
embracing the arm. Some modification, but you could you could figure out ways to make it work. I think I did that at one point, but I can't remember how exactly it came out. So, yeah, you could you know you can always modify it. Once you're blessed. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's do our life skill. If you are watching, you don't know what this is. This is a it's a it's like a it's a motion from the kung fu form actually, not from the all style tai chi or from the kung fu style, I should say. Um, but it's a life skill, it's like an idea for martial arts that can apply to, to, to life as a whole. Sort of a lesson to take into the life outside the martial arts. This one is called Balanced Emotions. It's appropriate in these times. Path of self mastery requires balanced emotions. Balanced emotions do not yield to negativity. Path of self mastery requires balanced emotions. Balanced emotions do not yield to negativity. Path of self mastery requires balanced emotions. Balanced emotions do not yield to negativity. Sarah, how to advanced and intermediate students. Black sash training dismissed. Very good. Uh, well,